service page session persistence and HTTP compression. Okay, what service will it is? Let's say in my environment, and as you can see, I have three web servers, web server one, web server two, web server two. These services are mapped to virtual IP. One of my web server, let's say web server one, is double in hardware specs. Like it has more RAM, it has more processor, it has more high speed network, let's say. And I am confident and I know that this web server, web server one, can serve more clients compared to web server two and web server three. Because this server is more strong, more powerful, more beefy. So that's where the weight matrix comes into play. Any server that can compare, uh, that can serve more number of users, I can increase the weight metric for that. By default, all of them have the same metric value. For example, let's see here. This is our virtual server run. So, as you can see, we have web server one, web server two, web server three by default. All of us, all, all of three of them have weight value of one. But as I said, I believe that web server one is more strong, a more powerful server and can serve more number of clients. And right now, by default, as the weight metric is same for all these three servers, they will serve equal number of clients or let's say no NetScaler will equally load balance between these three servers. So if I want to change the metric, all I have to do double click there on the binding and increase the metric, let's say to five. It's just an example. So now web server one have more weight, web server two and web server three have one weight. So if I go back to my client, sorry, let me just power it up. Okay, I powered up my client computer and web server three, two, one, one. You see, still on one, 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 three now, two, one. Refresh, still on one, still on one, still on one, still on one, still on file three, two, one, 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 one. See? So that's how, that's what weight metric is, and that's how it plays a role, so you can balance in between. You can change the balance. And tell that scaler that this server or this service is strong enough, it has lots of resources, and it should be able to serve more. Okay, that was the big metric. The second thing is the persistence. By default, there is no persistence. What's persistence? Imagine a site where you have, uh, you want to do some credit card like an e-commerce site or a shopping site. You establish a connection from a client computer using a browser, you connect to one of the web server, and you want that session to stay with that web server for a while. You don't want that, that you do some reason if something happened in the connection and you refresh the page and you go to another web server and you lose your shopping cart. Because it will be a different session, right? No, you want to continue with that session with one of the server until you select your item, pay for them, you know, and check out and all that and do all this transaction. That's what persistence is all about. By default, there is no persistence. It means the client can connect to anyone or any server. But let's say if my websites are mm, uh, e-commerce in nature or the type of application where I would like the client session to stay with one of the server, then uh, I should change the persistence settings. As you can see, 
different options. It can be based on source IP, cookie insert, SSL session ID, URL passive, custom ID, destination ID, and source destination ID. I can go for SSL session and then I can specify timeout. So with it, once timeout means SSL session, once the persistence will remain for two minutes if there is no activity or there is an inactivity for two minutes and after that the client refresh yeah it may go to another server but once there is a session for the next two minutes it's supposed to connect to the same server so that this session can stay alive okay. I can choose URL passive and specify an expression here. I can do cookie insert and I can do a cookie name. Let's say web app or it could be on source IP or you can have a different rule and build an expression. It depends what, what works for you. Customer server ID, URL passive, all these type of options are there. If you are doing by source IP, keep this in mind. There are some servers, also there are some clients, it could be very large number of clients which are behind a firewall. So source IP will be a net IP of a firewall. So that might not do proper justice to. So lots of cookie insert and I'll go web app. Okay. So that's how you enable the persistence and what type of persistence method you will enable that totally depends on your environment. Third thing, it's about a compression or HTTP compression in this case. Now, what's the benefit of compression? Of course, compression, it makes sure that the traffic is compressed, so it's faster processing as well as uh, faster to load. Uh, NetScaler can do HTTP compression instead of web servers. For example, if I go to my web server one, which is an IIS server, as you can see web server one and this is the compression option so if I open the feast feature I'm not using dynamic compression that's one of the feature in IIS and there's a static content compression which is enabled so it means my web server is performing compression but I don't want my web server to do compression because I want to offload this compression from web server to NetScaler by default, these are the settings of IIS, static compression. If it's so you compress the files which are greater than 2700 bytes. So I don't want to enable compression here. Okay, same thing I would like to do for my web server 2. Web server two compression open features and I want to disable that. Okay, theme for web server three. So I can disable compression. Bottom line is why I'm disabling compression of servers because I don't want my servers to perform compression. I want NetScaler to do this. So the servers can just work on you know, serving content. 
notes, no compression, no SSL off. Oh, sorry, no SSL processing and no compression. But SSL has nothing to do, to do with this setting. I'm just saying that. We will come to SSL later in the future, one of the videos. Okay. Now, if I go back to Netscale, where is the compression option? Compression option will appear here on your web server or services. You see? HTTP compression, it's yes. So if I edit and uh, let's say okay, so now let's see the compression, it is enabled. So if I Double click this one, and if I want to disable the compression, which is enabled by default, I can just go here and remove this checkbox. By default, the compression is enabled, so that's the good thing that that scalar will perform compression. But what's the criteria of compression? What should be the minimum size of an object that? will take part in compression. For that, you need to, if you want to adjust that parameter, like if you remember in web servers, there was a size, right? Only compressed file larger than, for example, 2700 bytes. Where is something like this in that scale that I can specify the size? Well, in that scale, it's called, I guess, quantum size. If I'm, if I'm correct, Doing correctly, it must be under optimization. Yeah, yeah, it's here, and here I can do the compression settings. And this is the quantum size. So anything by default bigger than this size, it will be compressed. Compression level, best speed, best, best compression. You can specify here. You write them by default. It's allow server side compression, but you can not. You can deselect this box if required. I would like to change the quantum size. You know, my net mine is very, very small. Uh, I my page is it's very small. So in my let's say uh, something. Make it very small now. Okay, and client. Ah, you see. I'm refreshing it and it's keep going to server 3. You know why? Anybody? Session persistence. Yes. Because I enabled the persistence, so I'm just going to web server 3. And when I will switch to another web server, if either number 1, my session gets timeout or timed out, or number 2, if web server 3 is down. Then in this case, of course, net, of course, NetScaler has no choice but to pass or to, or to establish a new session for me to another backend server or service. So as you can see, session persistence is working. I'm still on web server three. So if I go back to a dashboard. Yep. Get host. TCP connections. As you can see. And right now the compression ratio. 
see. HTTP compression ratio 7.5, total HTTP compression ratio 1.04. So, connections are working, session persistence is working, and of course, compression is working because I changed the value so low just to show because I don't have you know, lots of contents, it's just a small web page on each web server for demonstration. So, this is it, guys. These three settings are great or these three options that you need to know. Um, session persistence, it's important. And especially for when you want the session to stay alive with one of the server. D depends on the type of application that they want. Uh, I mean, the clients are using. For some application, especially on some sites like e-commerce like sites, it's very important that you enable session persistence. You can increase the timeout value as well and play play according to your environment. Compression is also good. Um, you can disable the compression on the server side. Even in NetScaler, there is an option you can disable server side compression. <coughs> Sorry, and allow and let NetScaler do the HTTP and weight metric. Weight metric, as I said earlier, that it's for prioritizing or let's say fairly distributing the load between services. You believe there is one server which is more stronger, more powerful hardware-wise, or more bandwidth is available to that server, and it can serve more client requests, you can increase the weight value of, for that server so that it can serve more clients so that's it that was weight values session persistence and http compression cheers